Okay. Uh, joining us tonight, uh, you might know him from his work on Bob FM, a little special guest here to drop five minutes. Please welcome Mr. John Milky, everybody. <laughs> Come on, keep it going. John Buggy, everybody. I got to do jokes? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> By the way, I'm looking forward to that the whole goddamn time. I cannot say fuck on the radio, but here I can say fuck, 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 fuck. And thank you for coming out, by the way. Uh, Robin Williams, what do you say about Robin Williams? Uh, you know, the CBC was asking me earlier, you know, did Robin Williams mean a lot to you? Robin Williams meant a lot to everybody. And little did we know the guy was going through so much pain. And that's what we're here for tonight, to draw attention to, you know, well, pay attention to Robin Williams, but also bring attention to mental health. By the way, if you don't know, I suffer depression, I suffer anxiety. But it's right now, this is fucking freaking me out. <laughs> so much. <laughs> Except that you're giving me some love. Thank you for that. Um, and, and thank you for coming. A sellout show. Anxiety <laughs> wants to hear 150 people buy tickets to see you, asshole. <laughs> By the way, how did the conversation go? Hey, uh, honey, um, we've been talking a lot about how we haven't been out for a while. <laughs> How'd you feel about going out with me Thursday night? Okay. <laughs> Where are we going? <laughs> to a comedy show about depression. <laughs> <laughs> and you're here. <laughs> you can, you're the most fantastic fucking salesperson in the history of the world. <laughs> Uh, by the way, the gang of Yuxx said uh, when they approached me about doing this because they know about my battle with depression, etc. And, and you know, would you like to do the tribute night to Robert Williams? I'm like, yeah, but I'm, I, I don't have a comedy routine or anything. It doesn't matter. You don't need to be funny. Just be like you are on the radio. <laughs> well, I just well have invited me to the Playboy Mansion and told me not to look at the girls. <laughs> This is not my first kick at the can, by the way. 1992 was my very first time doing stand-up comedy. I was working with a guy and he said, you're, you're funny. I'm like, okay, I'm funny, yeah. He says, we, we, we do like a little, you know, like a little community, you know, comedy act. Would you come out? Sure. I'll come out. So I did. And just like every good comedian, the first thing I thought of, I need a wardrobe. I bought the most pink shirt you could ever imagine in your life. Bubblegum wishes it was this pink. Vaginas wish it was this pink. The artist Pink wishes she was this pink. And I got one better. I matched it with an orange belt. And lime green pants that were so fluorescent they could have seen me from fucking space. Well, I wasn't. <laughs> In the middle of Quebec. Oh. First words out of my mouth were something along the lines of, Well, it's nice to be here tonight. Thank you very much for coming out. I can't wait till your province separates, so my drive to the East Coast is going to be that much shorter. <laughs> Holy shit, I've not heard a room that silent in a long time. Only twice in my life have I heard a room that silent. The second time, Christmas time, dinner table, my mom, my dad, and I don't know how it happened, but I managed to work in the word ball gag. <laughs> So here I am doing stand-up comedy. Um, yeah. What the fuck? Why not? Yeah. You're always so fun on the radio. You always seem like you're having a good time. How can you possibly be depressed? And it's like, well, depression. 
And sadness are not the same thing. I hate the word depression. Can we come up with another word? Because people get it confused all the time. Sadness is like, oh, my dog died. I'm sad. And that's a sad thing. Depression is like, I just won 30 fucking million dollars. Don't care. <laughs> Don't care. Doesn't fucking matter. Just, that's depression. And people are like, well, yeah, but they have pills and stuff for it now. It's like, yeah, but the pill you're describing, it's called LSD. <laughs> likely to get a prescription for that anytime soon. No, I'm on a drug called Ciprolex. And the best my doctor can describe it to me, Ciprolex is supposed to, you know, uh, put serotonins back in my brain and keep me balanced and stuff. And I don't know if it works or not. What I do know is that when I forget for a couple of days, holy fuck. It's like, you know, gym class when you're walking on the balance beam and you're like, hmm, don't look down. Right? So, that's what that is. And I was at the doctor's office the other day and he says, we need to start talking about getting you off that medication. Why? He says, look at you. You're huge. <laughs> yeah? He says, well, that's one of the most common side effects of this medication. Is it really? He says, yeah, it's pretty serious. I'm kind of concerned. I said, Doc, if what you're saying is true, I need to write a letter of apology to a couple of guys named Ben and Jerry. <laughs> Mars bars. Lay's. Probably McDonald's just for the fun of it. Oh, fuck, why not? Jack Daniels too, right? <laughs> Do coke cans, by the way, with the names on them. Oh, yeah, Samantha. Billy. <laughs> Who's drinking Jack and Coke right now? Where are you? It wasn't me. I just Jack and Coke? Did you just put your hand up for the fuck of it? Thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> if you're drinking Jack and Coke right now, do you realize that you could very well be drinking from the John? <laughs> I'm just putting it out there because that's my name. I am blessed with a wonderful name that I never really thought anything of until I met my father-in-law, who is a wonderful man. <laughs> but holy fuck is he twisted. <laughs> and he says things like, I need to take the recycle out, but not until I've gone to the John. <laughs> and I can hear him laughing in his head. I can hear him, the motherfucker. I can hear him. It's not audible, but I can hear him. I have a very important phone call to return, but I must go to the job. <laughs> Twenty-two some odd years I've known this man, and this is our everyday conversation <laughs> we're all together. And I'm sitting there going, you bastard. Don't fuck with me, man. I fuck back. And I've been waiting for that opportunity to fuck back. <laughs> so we're at the cottage recently, and he's knocking on the door. Literally, my opportunity to finally have a comeback is knocking on the goddamn door. I'm in there having a shower. <laughs> I need to use the John! I can hear him laughing. Oh, I can hear him laughing. And I'm, I'll be out in a minute. You've been in there for 30 fucking minutes already! And then it dumbed on me. <laughs> It's time. <laughs> I looked at the door and I said, Yes, I have. And I've been thinking of your sexy ass daughter the entire time. <laughs>